Now, I don't know about you, but I tend to think a lot. I overthink. All kinds of thoughts enter my mind. What am I going to have for lunch? Did I pay the gas bill? Why do I find it hard to let go? Am I good enough? Am I going to get through this TED talk without tripping up over the carpet? All these kind of things enter my mind. And we're kind of addicted to that kind of thinking. We're kind of stuck there. And you know what? I think sometimes if we can not be so addicted to thinking, well, how would that feel? Two things occupy my mind a lot, actually. And they are conducting and conduct. Conducting and conduct. And one particular question. How am I conducting my life? Now, as a conductor, I feel so privileged to stand up in front of musicians and with silent gesture start this wonderful orchestra, show them how loud or how soft I want, how intense I want this music. It's such a great honor to be working with great works of art with brilliant musicians all the time. I haven't always found it easy, and there have been some troubling parts Uh, in, in my conducting career, and I'll, I'll tell you about that later. But music is so very important part of my life, and it literally feeds my soul. Now, the other thing that feeds my soul is being a life coach. People come to me, and I, and I want to learn about their conduct, their behavior. And they come to me, and they, uh, they share with me that they're not showing up in the world as they want to. So they tell me about their anxieties, their fears, their wants and their needs. And I listen and we try together to work out what's going on. And I try to make them stay in the present moment, not in the sadness and fear of the past or the future. Now, we are thinking people. We've evolved that way in the most brilliant of ways. And the French philosopher René Descartes famous, famously said, I think Therefore, I am. We know that we are alive when we're thinking. And we're the only species that have developed in this way. And we've thought a lot and created amazing things, wonderful inventions, um, intelligent philosophies, beautiful music, incredible works of art. And we've done that because of our level one thinking. We were able to think so well. But of course, there's a flip side, right? We can be too much in there. And most of us aren't really involved in that high-level thinking. We're involved in the level two and level three. What am I going to have for lunch? When did, did I pay my gas bill? And somehow that, that holds us captive. And we can't seem to escape that constant merry-go-round of thought. It's an addiction. And addiction is a disease of the mind. And today, addiction is more prevalent than ever. I'm probably going to after I leave the stage, look at this thing. And apparently, we look at this thing, this phone, on average, 80, 80 times a day. And when we do look at that phone, it's probably going to be social media, Facebook, uh, Instagram. We're going to check out comments. Did we get enough likes? Are we addicted to likes? And I often think to myself, what would it be like if we weren't stuck up there? Could we just be a bit calmer? Could we not think so much? What would that feel like? What would that sound like? And I suspect for most of us, the sound of silence would be utterly deafening. Now, when I'm up there, my conduct changes. I can literally be like a zombie. I can walk past someone I've known in the corridor in the street for years, and I just don't know that they're there, because I'm lost in a thought, maybe I've had an argument with someone, or there's an email that I need to attend to. And, it's, and it, we can just get lost. And sometimes when I'm really tense, you know, have you been in that feeling where you've got a lot to think about? Really, really think. And then someone asks you a question, you snap back. Don't disturb me. And that's what's, ha what's happening there, is that we're, be, we're disconnecting. We're so up here, this, this top third of, of our body, we forget we have all this real estate all this property down below. And, and what's happening uh, with that property? Why, uh, why are we not feeling into it? What's going on? We're disconnecting ourselves. We don't know that we can feel sometimes. We don't know 
that if we take a simple intake of breath, we can feel into our bodies. We can wiggle our toes and we know that we have feet. We can wiggle our fingers. Sometimes we're not connected to that. We're disconnected. Now, I want to share with you a word, uh, a new word that I learned recently, and it's conducere. It's a Latin word for conductor, and it means bringing together. And I love that idea as a conductor. That's me on the, on the, the left with my hand outstretched that we can bring together, bringing in with Conducere, the orchestra, bringing that lovely sense of togetherness. And I also love that idea that let's not be disconnected, let's be connected. Let's have some Conducere, let's bring together uh, our... Um, this is not um, boy loves girl, this is the mind, the heart, and the body. And I really love... <laughs> And I really love the idea that as a conductor, I can bring that feeling in together of this, of this mind, of this heart or feeling, and of the body. It's my job to do that, to get the orchestra to listen uh, and, 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 and observe through the eyes and the ears, and then to feel this music together through this silent gesture, through my body. And the whole thing starts by me bringing in together through conducere. And I want to demonstrate to you today. I want you to be my guinea pig. I also want to know that you're awake. Um, I want to ask you to clap in a minute. I'm going to conduct you. Now, what, I'm going to put my, uh, uh, the, the slide thing down, and I'm going to ask you in a minute to clap. Now, what I do to get you to do that is that I have to kind of gather my breath, and then I release. And on that release at the bottom, that's where you clap. So should we try this? Here we go. B minus, you could do better. Do you want to, let's stand up, let's stand up. Let's feel our bodies by standing up. That's the slowest stand up I've ever seen of any audience. <laughs> Here we go. Right, so I'm going to gather in and... Once more. Once more. Let's try the loud one. Great. Good. Well done. Give yourselves a round of applause. That was great. If I ever need a clapping orchestra, I shall hire you, definitely. Now, that's what happens when everything flows correctly. But, you know, sometimes as a conductor, if I'm stuck up here, things happen or things don't happen. Try again. Try clapping. Here we go. I haven't put the downbeat yet, and you started clapping. What's going on? Well, I'm obviously le not losing the plot. I'm stuck in my mind. You know how sometimes when you're so stuck up there, you can't think of anything else. You're immobile. You procrastinate. You put off. And actually what's happening is that you're just spinning around and around and around up there. And sometimes when I lose that sense of feeling as well, I become robotic as a conductor. And I'm sure you've seen that there are robots now who conduct. They've invented a conducting robot. Robots are really going to take over the world. But of course, this robot is very robotic by nature. So, and you input all that kind of movement. But, you know, I want to feel the music. I want to kind of give a sense of, of caressing the music. Or if it's something big and grand, I give it something. Or if it's something a bit more energetic, I can do that as well. And of course, the body. I have to be in touch with my body as a conductor. It's really important. And we, we can gain that connection simply by breathing in. Breathe in now. By breathing in, we connect to our bodies. And as, I don't know if you've ever been backstage, but even before going on for a TED talk, your, your, your TED talk, a heartbeat is beating faster. Just taking a few deep breaths can help connect you to your bodies and get rid of that anxiety again. And sometimes, you know, that shallow breathing, hyperventilating. Some people get so nervous, classical musicians or musicians in general, that they can't go on stage because they feel that they, they can't connect to their bodies anymore. Now, I've been conducting for uh, nearly 25 years now, and I've learned a heck of a lot about trying to connect everything. It all started when I was 10. 
And I went to the cinema, and I saw this movie with an actress playing the cello. And I thought, wow, that looks like a fantastic and really cool instrument. I'm going to find out what it was. So later I found out it was the cello, and I went to school, and I asked, can I learn this instrument? And that's when my uh, journey in, in classical music started. And I soon started playing the piano, and I started composing. And it was a wonderful time. It was a time of exploration. I was like a sponge soaking up all this, all this detail about music. And I, I, it was just a, a really great flow. And as I got better and more able and more proficient, something happened. Thoughts started creeping in. The thinking started happening. This inner critic within me, the person that tells me things. Oh, did you practice enough? Oh, I think you're going to fail. This piece is way too hard for you. And what happens about this, these voices, is, is, is this inner critic, is that when we're young, this thing protects us. It helps us. The world is a very scary place. We have two caregivers, usually, and, and they can't be there all the time. So this, this inner critic protects us from that, tells us, don't touch that cup of hot tea, because if you do, you'll burn your hand. Okay. Don't go near the stairs, you might fall. Okay. What it fails to understand is that when we grow up and become adults, it still thinks that we're a child. And so you get that constant Constant questioning, constant negative feedback. And I know the inner critic was raging for me during a particular period of my life. When I'd won a competition, a conducting competition, I fended off many, many competitors, and I got down to the last three competitors in the BBC Young Conductors Workshop in England in 2001. And I was thrilled to be one of the three contestants. So we all had to conduct a piece in this concert. So there we go, we do that. And it happened to be my night. I won. And I was so overjoyed. It was a great ex feeling, great experience. So two days later, um, uh, there was a critic. There were many criti music critics uh, in the audience at that time. And they write reviews about concerts. And they often publish those reviews in newspapers, major newspapers. And so this happened for this concert I was in as well, this competition. And the headline was, Conductor with most promise loses out on first prize. He obviously thought that I didn't deserve to win, that I wasn't good. Someone else should have won. And you can imagine, wow, that was really hard to read and hard to hear. And something happened. I started getting very depressed, very down, very anxious, and a little bit angry as well. I remember my friends saying, Jace, don't worry, you're great. It'll be fine. Who cares what he says? You know, they were trying to comfort me. It kind of didn't help. I started eating things that we shouldn't. Crisps, burgers, chips, comfort eating. I'm sure we've all been there. <laughs> it didn't help. I started buying stuff. I love gadgets and clothes. Didn't help. Nothing would fill that hole. I even said to myself, Jason, you're fine. Don't worry. It's great. What does he know? And it still felt bad. And what I learned from being a life coach was that we often are blind to what's happening in ourselves. We don't really know what's going on. And that meditation can clear our headspace. And that journaling, writing our feelings down, can get, get this stuff out on paper and make it real. And that's really good. But I also, it's also good to explore what's going on as well. And to uh, deepen our knowledge of ourselves, which is why... I um, started looking at the three R's, not reading, writing, arithmetic, but responsibility, rejection, and reveal. And you too can take these three R's away and, and use them in your own life. So, responsibility. Going back to that competition concert, it was my responsibility to conduct the best I could, to show up, be passionate, and really give it all I could. That was my responsibility. The, the music critic's responsibility was to write what he felt about what went on, his decision. I have no control over that. That's not my responsibility. He has his responsibility, I have mine. And that was the first step to understanding what was going on. Secondly, Rejection. I was rejecting a lot. Those feelings of sadness that were coming in, anxiety, a little bit of anger, depression, I chose to push those away. I chose to eat, to buy, 
to ignore. What would have been more helpful is if I invited in those emotions or those feelings and just let them sit, just acknowledge them, just by saying, I feel sad today is enough. I feel depressed. And if you want to go a bit further, you can actually have a chat with depression or a chat with sadness. Just a gentle inquiry about what really is going on. And that brings us to our third point, reveal. You know, it's very hard. We tell ourselves stories all the time. And these stories, we begin to believe these stories, which in, where in fact they're not the truth. And finding out the truth can be a little bit uncomfortable sometimes. And I later discovered that what was going on, this sadness, this depression, this depression that was going through from reading that review, was because I wasn't, I wasn't aware of what's going on. You know, I actually wasn't aware, and I wanted to understand exactly what was going on. And what was going on was that I was lacking self-worth. I didn't feel I had value. I didn't feel I had the talent. That's why I was feeling those feelings. And if I dug a little bit deeper, I would have connected it to the fact that maybe I wasn't loved enough as a child. Maybe I needed more love in a certain way. And once we explore those three R's, what happens? Well, we create an understanding. We begin to see what was unseen. Something that was invisible becomes visible. And with that understanding, we create a compassion. We allow ourselves to be kind to ourselves for once and say, oh, okay. So that's when your knots unravel, you feel less burdened, and you feel lighter in the world. Now, you can practice these three R's. As a musician, practice makes perfect. We all know that, right? And I tell my students all the time, if you think me sitting in front of the piano, hoping to learn that piece of Beethoven by osmosis, it's never going to work. I literally have to get my fingers in there and to learn. And I tell my clients, coaching clients, the same thing. Journal, uh, meditate, do the practices. And by doing those things, we can really try to understand. So if you have uh, something that makes you feel uncomfortable, a situation, ask yourself, what am I responsible for? What am I not responsible for? Ask yourself, are you rejecting? Most of the time we are rejecting. We're rejecting being in the present by fearing the past or the future. Ask yourself, what are you rejecting? And then thirdly, Try to reveal the truth. The truth sometimes hurts, sometimes is uncomfortable. But when you know the truth, you'll set yourself free. Back to that question I was asking myself at the beginning, how, do I, how am I conducting my life? Well, I would suggest that you conduct your life through conducere, through the bringing together of the mind, of the feelings of the heart and the body. And if I were a... Uh, it, uh, Philosopher, I'd probably suggest this. To think and feel is to be you. Thank you very much.